doing my research on her, I realized of all the people I've recorded and spoken to, this is someone who makes me feel a lot lesser or that I'm not doing enough. With all the challenges and hurdles that she's come through, Doreen Barber is truly an inspiration. Thank you so much for joining me today, Doreen. I am absolutely thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much, Tafheda. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's 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 a pleasure, absolutely. Doreen, you know, when I read, like, when I was reading on you, I saw that, you know, throughout, like, to, to where you are today, you've faced a lot of challenges, a lot of hurdles, everything. Like, right from the time, like, you were born, you had the civil war, and then you had the battle with yourself. And then so many more hurdles that you seem to have come out of thrivingly. Can you just briefly take us uh, through your yeah. journey to where you are, mashallah, today? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I mean, who doesn't face challenges in life? Who doesn't face difficulties? Um, but of course, the, the intensity varies from one person to another and the, re the reaction also, the response. Um, so I, I grew up in Lebanon during the war. Mm -hmm. And um, in the 90s, I got diagnosed by uh, osteogenic sarcoma, a bone cancer, and my leg got amputated above the knee. Um, I would like to say like briefly, like my life was full of challenges because mm -hmm. I was like left with a new body, new disability, and I couldn't, I didn't know what, what uh, how to get along with that, how to move on, especially because like in the 90s, I was 15 and mm -hmm. there was, wasn't social media or internet. I couldn't like search yeah. or Also, you were up. just coming out of the trauma from yeah, the war. Yeah, like war was tough. And were I, you in like right in the center of it? Yeah, place? yeah, yeah. There, there was a lot of conflict oh. uh, in Lebanon, mm -hmm. uh, the civil war. So, um, so going uh, like when the war ended, I thought that like this is the worst that could happen. But yeah. you, you never know. Like life like, is that full is of the surprises. Worst in a lot of things, yeah, yeah li li life is full of surprises. And I continued despite my disability and my difficulties. I continued my life, but uh, somehow like my dreams were were I shifted direction. Like my mm -hmm. dreams, I couldn't. Um, like for example, it was difficult for me to think of doing sports again because mm -hmm. you were I, a very sporty person. You yeah, saying, yeah. I, I was passionate about playing basketball, the running. Uh, it made me feel empowered and and um, I felt uh, alive mm -hmm. when I when I used to play basketball. So uh, sports were out of the question for me. The only mm -hmm. thing that I, I was able to do was swimming, and it was lame. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like I, I probably it must not be as adrenaline. Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, like swimming, like the water is carrying you in the water. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen if you? <laughs> I know how to swim. Yeah. Uh, but um, you know, I continued my life, and yeah. here I am today. Uh, despite everything, I'm here. Yeah. And I achieved what I achieved. So let's briefly talk about your achievements. You know, she's just saying I achieved what I achieved. You know, <laughs> as if it is something you've done marathons. You've done like marathons. I think is the thing now. But uh, to uh, participate and come out successfully a triathlon and to be a Guinness record holder, no less, guys. So I mean, like that. That's a lot of achievement, right? So yeah. you cannot just brush it up. Yeah, I've achieved what I've achieved. I think everything that uh, I have passed through in my life have prepared me for this. Yeah, and. Um, Sometimes we, when we we are passing through a difficult time, we think that uh, all the emotions come rushing in, and we think we, we don't want to feel pain, we don't want to feel because it's uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, it's an um, opportunity for us to change and transform and to yeah. learn something out yeah. of it. Uh, but for me, it wasn't like that. It was like more, why did this happen to me? Yeah. I needed to find the answer why yeah. this happened yeah. and. And somehow I created the reason for, for what happened to me, uh, which, which is uh, inspiring other people, being Brilliant. the role model I was looking for all these years. Because when I was 15, mm -hmm. I was always looking like, who can help me like move mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. I couldn't see someone that can be an example for me. So I felt like at some point in my life, I felt like I can be that example to people. I wow. can... I it can just challenge that realization. Yeah, that that like I can challenge myself. I can um, venture on like doing like trying new stuff. Uh, but also, this didn't come like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I had a defining moment, which I decided I wanted to be a different person. I wanted to to change my life and take control. Mm -hmm. So before we get to that defining moment, you were just saying that that that's the thing with life, right? When you have it all, you don't really push yourself. You don't. But versus when you are faced with an adversity is when you actually challenge your boundaries. Yes. So probably, you know, what you've gone through has 
obviously made you like or got you where you are today. Otherwise, you could have not been as you know prominent or as inspiring probably as you are today. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Everything that happens in our life prepares us for something bigger. Bigger. Uh, I think that belief is something we all struggle with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We can do that. Uh, yeah, I yeah. see a lot of people like there's there are like I know. Thank you so much for saying I'm inspiring. But but for me there are a lot of people that are inspiring, but they don't see that. They don't see that they are inspiring because. Yeah. Because they they didn't see how, like they didn't believe in themselves. Mm-hmm. They didn't they just you know like did did what they have to do, and they didn't think yeah. that it's a big thing what you have you accomplished. You just lead a complacent, mono, like monotonous life, not yeah. realizing the impact you could have on others. Yeah, it, it's good to give yourself credit also when yeah. you've done something, overcame something. It's good mm-hmm. to give yourself credit yeah. because this this will help you uh, mm-hmm. move on and and and. Uh, accept uh, the new challenges that i think in a lot of ways women don't recognize that right yeah because we just breeze through life we don't take a moment to absorb what we are doing the absorb and uh, enjoy or like revel in something that we've done we just move on to the next thing yes yes definitely and especially nowadays like yeah oh, life, nowadays it's overwhelming life is so fast and so fast. And, and, and even you you feel like okay for me like i've done this okay now what's next i want i want to think about something mm-hmm. new i think that's that's a culture in dubai right you're constantly looking for new things to do yes you have to be on top of the game because i think everyone is in a rush yeah. in dubai i think i don't think it's a good thing it honestly isn't. we need to slow down Absolutely. slowing down enjoying li- enjoying life feeling the moment um let's just enjoy enjoy the moment enjoy this is my actually my resolution this year to enjoy every moment like to absorb it enjoy it and there's mm-hmm. no rush in life just be who you want to be there's no yeah. competition you know yeah. like you're only competing with with who you were mm. and who you want to be now so there's no competition against anyone because no one can be that in I mean like you will have your space. you can be insp- mm-hmm. you can be inspiring to someone they can mm-hmm. do the same thing but no one can be you like yeah. you know you, you are unique. you are unique with your own journey with your own uh, perspective your own responses yeah absolutely so when you said you had this defining moment and uh, that is when you decided okay you're going to take hold of things how did that happen how do you understand okay like when did you, when did the realization you know strike you that i have to make something for myself i have you know i think a lot of women are just waiting for that kind of motivation yeah i think uh what happens with with us human beings is that we stay comfortable so much that, that that i think life hits you with with something and and it's life changing and you have to now you have to change you have to stand up yeah you have to stand up and change and that happened to me because right after i delivered my second child i fell in the kitchen and i broke my hip where oh. my where my amputation is and that was 20 years after losing my leg so at that years. 20 years oh. so at that moment i but was by like then you had been used to your life without yeah used yeah. to my life but also i wasn't really accepting myself like as my disability i was always living in the shadows trying to uh, merge in the society trying to like like i'm like everyone you know mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. Sh- not trying showing... forcefully to fit in For- forcefully to fit in but you are like no yeah exactly i think it's in the mind right that you have to fit in whereas i don't think people around you would realize it like that yeah because you want to protect yourself mm-hmm. because we are afraid of of people's reaction people's opinion mm-hmm. that's why you You, you don't, don't want that attention. Yeah, you don't want attention and you're afraid of what would they think? What would the reaction be? Even mm. though if I'm doing something that will free me or make me feel comfortable, I I wouldn't do it because I would be afraid of of people's reaction. Mm. So, hiding myself, I came to a point where like I broke my hip, I have to change, I have to get up for my kids. Mm-hmm. So, this was my defining moment because I realized that like, I've been living all these years. I haven't exercised. I haven't attempted exercise. Now I'm oh. forced okay. to rehabilitate. So you, after this injury, you gave up on sports. You gave up on working on yourself. After losing my leg, yeah. I I oh, gave yeah, up on sports. Mm-hmm. But then, when this accident happened to me, I was forced to rehabilitate my body mm-hmm. because I had to be strong altogether to recover in order for me to walk again. Mm-hmm. So when I started the rehabilitation process and I lost a lot of weight. that when the transformation happened and i felt like confident and i felt why haven't i done this before i wasted so many years not uh, attempting exercise you know i'm a kind of person if this 
like I used to think like this. If I don't have this, I would I don't want anything else. Oh, okay. This is hard when you have yeah. this mindset. Like, you, uh, you borderline OCD. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like like if you can't have if this, this is it. If, that's if, it. If not this, then nothing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. this is what I had this mentality. Like mm-hmm. I lost my leg then that's it. I'm not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. I can't run. That's it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't try anything else with my body. So I started uh, working out, lifting weights, and I started to see the change. And that made me feel confident. That made me feel like, wow, I can do a lot of stuff. I can now uh, like uh, explore my abilities. The the disability didn't matter as much. Yeah, exactly. Because I saw that uh, I, I was focused on what I had lost. Yeah, and, and forgot what I have. Like yeah. being grateful mm-hmm. is the most important thing. Yeah. Like that is the root of all beginnings. This is the root and, and believe believe it or not, if you really be mindful of what you have and, and be grateful, we are we all have we are rich. We are rich. If you have a roof, if you have food to eat, your kids are okay. I really mean it like if you think about it when you're sad, there's nothing to be sad about. When you look at lesser fortunate people, that is when exactly. you value what you have. Exactly. Absolutely. We always think about, you know, oh, I should have had this. You know, why don't I have this? We always question, like you said, you know, we ask God, why God, why me? Yeah. But then we look at lesser fortunate people and like, we are not even in a position to even, you know, raise that question. Yes. For all the blessings that you have. Like you said, you know, one, one disability put you back so much that you ignored all other parts, all of the strengths of yours. Yes. And even though some people will tell you, well, you don't know what, what I'm passing through or mm-hmm. what you don't know. They think always that their problem is the biggest. Yeah. And I have, like, there are people that are worse than my case. Absolutely. And, and uh, I think the, the, the most important thing is not look about, like, not look at the people that are misfortunate. Mm-hmm. More look at what you have, like, uh, focus on your life. Count your you blessings. Have. Yeah. What's important in life? What's the main, pre- main mm-hmm. thing that's important? having the, your health, your mind, because this will help you actually achieve mm-hmm. your goals. Because all what I have achieved is because I changed my mind. I changed my thoughts, the way I think. Mm. It's not about... Did uh, anyone guide you to? Because all those years you've been living in this constant state of self-pity, like you said, or, you know, trying to fit in. You've always been seeking that validation. What, how did you train your mind to think differently? Uh, the thing is, if anyone like uh, passes through a transformation, people will see that change on you and they start to encourage you and, and I applaud you. So I just needed a little applaud. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, you lost weight. Like just this thing. Yeah. Yeah, wow, you lost weight. Wow, wow. On some subconscious that, level, we all seek this. Yeah, will we'll, we'll push you. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I did it. Yeah, yeah, this will push you and will we'll open up a whole new world for you. And you'll think about what you can do more, what you like, how how you feel about yourself is very important. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how people feel about you. Yeah, at the end, when you reach your goal, you know, then you'll be so proud of yourself. Yeah, definitely. And especially for someone like you, where you said that you've always been, you know, hiding away from the crowd, to coming out, you know, like uh, I think you was, you were also a part of a bodybuilding competition where you built your body so well that you even won. Yeah. So how was that? Like you know, putting yourself in the spotlight. You know, yeah. from hiding in the shadows. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say I was hiding from the shadows totally. I was mm-hmm. hiding my disability, but yeah. not me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. because I was always engaged in uh, youth uh, activities to help the the uh, the people in need in Lebanon. I was in an okay. organization, so we used to do a lot of charity oh, so for people. When did you move out of Lebanon? I moved out in 2006 when I got married. We moved to Dubai and we started our life together, me and my husband. And I was working at that time. I was in insurance. Oh, okay. Uh, I've been I've worked in that field for almost eight years. Uh, there was also a, a brief uh, like statement of yours where I read that you found it so difficult, hard to find a job even. Exactly. It was so hard for me because I couldn't uh, go to university right away after I graduated school. Mm-hmm. My parents couldn't uh, like afford. So I had to do something to find a job and then... Mm-hmm. pay for my uh, for my education mm-hmm. so i did um, an administ- administration diploma in ywca and then i started looking for a job and it was like an adventure because like people <laughs> like yeah. oh okay but why do you limp i mean what does that have to do with my qualification? Yeah, and it's not like a job you, you would need to actually walk around exactly with. it's yeah, like it's i'm best job. it's administration like mm-hmm. secretary like yeah. uh, 
So that was hard for me, honestly, wow. uh, to find a job. Then I landed a job in insurance okay. and my career like uh, started, it took, yeah, yeah, it took off and I started to learn more about insurance and I, I couldn't like, of course, I was full time working mm -hmm. and I couldn't go to university and I was already building a career. So mm. I was like, yeah, let let me. Yeah, then you think you're sorted. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, I'm, I'm making money, making money and I'm, I built my career in insurance. So okay. and then you moved here with your husband. But yeah. where do you meet your husband? In Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah, and the organization that we were in, the chari charity organization, we used to do a lot of activities for kids, for the elderly. Oh, so your interests are aligned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah together, the youth group. Mm -hmm. And then how was it when you moved to Dubai? Uh, it was life-changing. Like, yeah. Because I immediately took that decision, me and my, hus my husband back then. I told him there's no way I could live in, 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 mm -hmm. in Lebanon. Because, uh, you know, there is no facilities, there's no, uh, it's, life is not easy for a pe person with disability. And, mm -hmm. and to raise a family there, it would be harder also. Okay. So we wanted to level up and, and we moved to Dubai. And honestly, my life changed because here it's like life is easy. Mm -hmm. Life is, more uh, uh, yeah, more accepting. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's easy for people. It's accessible mm -hmm. for people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. So... So I found like, uh, wow, like it's... A whole new change. Yeah, a whole new change. In fact, you know, if you think about it, when you are disabled, it's not... What disables you is the means that 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 are not available for you to move. Yeah, it's not uh, in you. It's not in you. It's what goes because you. I wanted I want to move on, but mm. help me like make things accessible for mm. me so I can move. Yeah. For example, for the blind, for the deaf. Yeah. I don't see like a lot of things that are accessible yeah. for these people. I think in many ways they want they are more they are they want to do more, but the society is kind of. Uh, no, like not uh, not yet ready to you know accept that change yeah and 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 these people somehow you don't see them in real life yeah we like don't you cater don't, to that you yeah. don't see a lot of blind people for example crossing mm. the streets you yeah, don't well, see we don't see in dubai you don't see because i think uh, we need to work more on accessibility mm -hmm. for for uh, everybody yeah so like going back to how was it being in the spotlight uh Honestly, I opened... I think uh, not just uh, the fashion show, but overall, like, you know, there was, like you said, you made a conscious decision to come out and be, like, be the, be the inspiration that you were seeking. Yes. When I, when I realized how, how powerful I am and how, what I can be and what I did to myself and how I changed myself inside out, I wanted to give that to other people wholeheartedly because I, I thought about... Everybody I looked at, like me, I thought, this, this is Darin. This mm. is Darin, 15 years old. This is Darin, 9 years old. This is, the, You know, like, I, I looked at people as if they are me and they mm. need help. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give, that, give back. Mm. That's why I opened up my Facebook page and I started to share my story and the feedback was amazing. And mm. that's what kept me going on. So I think you, yours would have been one of the first stories to have come out like that. Uh, not necessarily. There are yeah. other people. But for me, like few, very few. But for me, it was more... Uh, from sports uh, point of view, yes, I mm -hmm. was the first in the in the region mm. to be to go yeah, into in region, sports yeah. uh, and and open up as an amputee, uh, make mm. a public profile and stuff like that. One but, of the first Arab uh, athletes as well uh, that participated finished a super sprint triathlon okay. with a prosthetic leg, and I participated in a World Beauty Fitness and Fashion Show in yeah. London. Yeah, uh, yeah, in 2017. And how was it with the spotlight? Um, I mean, like, I did this competition because I wanted to challenge myself and face my fears of people's perception of beauty and perfection. And because, you know, it's what happened to me is all about the appearance, like my mm -hmm. appearance, my, um, my view of myself was, was broken. So I wanted to challenge that and appear on stage like, I, I don't care, like, this is me and I... I am happy. I, I love myself. So this is why I did that. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it, uh, it's, it was amazing, honestly, to face. You know, fear is like it's in your head sometimes. Mm. Yeah. It's bigger than you think. Mm. But when you attempt something and the fear goes away. like yeah. And then you wonder what were you fearing all along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, wow. Like people That's like, right. because you know what? When, you, when, you, when I did that, 
it also sheds the light every person will think of themselves mm-hmm. well i can't do that she did that you yeah. know mm-hmm. it makes the other person disabled yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so th- this is what i was telling you right reading your story he makes me feel so much lesser oh my god like am i doing enough i could i could do so much more but this is yeah. not the point uh, yeah. i'm sorry <laughs> this is not the point Th- this is the thing basically I, you know i want to challenge myself like i can do more right yeah, i can the, the, out, like yeah. there's a fine line between like thinking oh wow look at her she's like as if i'm not yeah. or or there's like oh wow then i can do it yeah. you know there's a fine line and i think this is w- when people sometimes feel competitive it's mm-hmm. not a competition i'm yeah, doing this for me yeah. and if you think you can do it then this is my message yeah. and please uh, the stage is yours yeah. <laughs> it's not me to prove anything i'm proving mm-hmm. this for myself it's my journey yeah so what next in your journey so you've been singing you've been like you've been trying dabbling your hand at different stuff it it all it's like a flow my mm-hmm. life is like a flow i'm i don't force anything mm-hmm. uh, because my mindset has changed and because uh i i live optimistically now and and i try to to stay positive as mm-hmm. much as possible mm-hmm. uh things come to me by themselves so so it's yeah, not it's like you attract all vision the, like a vision yeah i have of, of course i want to be successful mm-hmm. i want to be a, a great speaker i want to um like um like expand my 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 vision my my message to to all over the world but this will come naturally mm. if you have the mindset you know if mm. you have the right thinking everything you will attract it yeah yeah that's so, what like what you manifest is what comes yeah back. exactly yeah. yeah yeah so because you know how how hard is it for you to stay constantly positive like it's n- you- it's not it's not like um, i mean it's not about staying positive as as about being optimistic it's hard to stay positive sometimes you wake up in a bad mood mm-hmm. right mm. but overall you're optimistic you t- during the day you change your mood you you control your thoughts mm-hmm. you know whatever is coming into your mind you just control it you just mm. uh, uh whatever negative thoughts you 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 just aware of what you're thinking mm-hmm. it's not like uh, being negative is not really a bad thing but because if you're not mm-hmm. negative you don't know how to be positive mm-hmm. if you're positive all the time like you look like a stupid person <laughs> it's like a fluctuation of emotions yeah exactly yeah. i mean you have to pass through ups and downs in order for you to uh, to to uh, learn about yourself mm-hmm. and, and what you can like how you can change mm-hmm. you, you you know so do you go back to lebanon are you trying to do anything that supports your vision in lebanon as well Uh I've done a lot of through the years honestly I've done talks I've done uh, talks in schools and uh, now after my song I released my released my song I've had a, a large positive feedback from from very young people like mm-hmm. from people from 4 years old 6 uh, teens okay so a lot of schools contacted me in mm-hmm. Lebanon but unfortunately I couldn't travel because I'm here so okay. when I am there uh i will try my best like to uh accommodate all the requests that that uh so do you like i do you intend to uh actually practice like your uh, philanthropy or your uh, message in lebanon uh, not there? not intentionally like i want to do that but mm. if uh, if i am there yes why not i will mm-hmm. participate in whatever yeah. because i want to help also people in my mm-hmm. country to to have them overcome because mm. now the situation is even worse even worse yeah, yeah. i understand because but now with the economic crisis it's going to, because i had a lot of friends who went to lebanon and they came back they loved the food they loved the people they loved the rich history that uh, yeah. you have but you know i the, with the crisis currently it must be difficult for you yeah, yeah. as a tourist um, you a, will love the the country yeah. but living there it's uh, it's difficult my yeah. my family is there yeah. like it's difficult mm-hmm. so how has your life changed post your positive post your uh, the whole growth uh change of course to the better to i the better. i'm achieving yeah. a lot mm-hmm. uh obviously i'm achieving a lot and what is the message that you are constantly trying to give out with there is no people? disability in life like mm-hmm. disability is just in in your decisions you like if if you have something and you want to decide and you cannot decide it, it disables you like mm. you, you need to take action you need mm-hmm. to uh to be courageous in life yeah. to take risks of course calculate the risk not not go throw mm-hmm. yourself out of yeah from the building so so i think 
it made me believe that impossible is nothing. Mm -hmm. There is nothing impossible in life. If you mm -hmm. put it in your mind, you can do it. And this is what I try to teach my kids yeah. also. Like, nothing is impossible. You have to have the discipline, the consistency. There is working hard. You have There's to so work. Much the kids can you, Yeah, you have to work hard for, mm -hmm. for yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't come easy. Yeah. Working out doesn't come easy. The, now I yeah. struggle. I go through ups and downs. I'm not mm -hmm. always like, yeah, I want to wake yeah. up, go to the gym. Not, not, it's not the, yeah, it's always not like this. Yeah. yeah, it's not always like this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I have my ups, I'm at, at my downs. So I have, but I learned how to cope. I learned how to deal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that is something that you can obviously pass on to your kids. Definitely, yeah. 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 I un encourage all the parents to put their kids in sports activities because mm -hmm. it's very important. Yeah. I mean, I cannot stress enough how important it is to have this lifestyle, active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you're not like, you don't like to go to the gym, stay active because yeah. it is important. Like your body needs to... Uh, move your body because if you like there's a saying a healthy uh, mind is in a healthy, healthy body, body. It, yeah, it is yeah. true yeah, yeah. i've experienced You've experienced it. it yeah so mm -hmm. i've seen the 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 great results that it mm -hmm. had on me and i really want everybody to live like this because yeah. it fights aging also as well mm -hmm. as you age yeah so anyways now let's move to a quick take segment where we have quick answers from you Quick fun answers. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, what is one thing you would do differently given a choice? Do differently given a choice? Yeah. Uh, you surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, is there an if or? No. Like, if given a choice, something that you would do differently in your life. <laughs> <laughs> do differently in my life. Maybe I would have pursued uh, a career in music, music. earlier, than, earlier than now. Yeah, yeah, because because you really have taken to it. Yeah, because I had I have the talent and I have the passion for it, but also I I didn't like put much effort in it because also I had my family and my uh, my mm. uh, my health and everything. But but I think that was uh, I would put more time. Yeah. So do you see yourself doing more of that going forward? Uh, not not all the time, yeah. but yes. But you'll yeah. explore more. Yeah, definitely. So what is a quality that you would wish to give up on? Quality I wish to give up on? Bad quality? Yeah, something oh, that bad. you want to give up on. <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> what is this? Bad quality. Um... I think I'm very radical in my uh, in my decisions sometimes. Very radical in my decisions. Yeah. But this bad? Oh, no, it, not necessarily. Not right? necessarily, but then it works sometimes in your favor as well, right? But it could be like more thought, like whatever you want it to be, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is a personality trait that you have no time for? Personality trait I don't have time for? Yeah. What do you mean? Or something that you cannot stand in other people. In other people? Yeah. Not yeah. in me. Not uh, in I'm me. like, ah, uh, you uh, me. <laughs> the complaining. Okay. I don't like complaining. Mm. Especially when people complain to you and they ask for your advice, mm. you give it. Then a few days later, they don't do with it and they complain again about the yeah. same thing. I don't like it. You don't like it. <laughs> so when people come to you with their concerns, are you able to guide them in the right manner? Yeah, I can believe you. I can talk you into believing in yourself in one hour. Yeah. Definitely. So do you like? Did, uh, I read somewhere that you went uh, for coaching, mental health coaching. Yes. So how was your mental health during this whole process? Mental health coaching. Yeah. You mean like the NLP? Uh, no, no, I didn't do an NLP. Didn't? No, okay. No. So, but then you talk a lot about your mental health strength. Yeah. How was it during your all what I passed through? Uh, it, it was a struggle, honestly. Like because. As you said, it's not about you, it's about the society. So you're trying to absorb people's reaction and they make you believe something that is not true about yourself. Mm -hmm. So you so you're fighting thoughts that are uh, imposed on you that are wrong. That are wrong. But you yourself you want to move on and you you have a smile and you want to like uh, enjoy life but you you you're are stuck with this. Yeah, you you're like faced with people's reaction, people's doubts, people's fears. Because they are not ready to accept you. Because if if they put themselves in your in your shoes, they feel like they would have given up. Yeah. 
So that's why. Oh, and that, that, that demoralizes you. Yeah, too. of course, because you're like, you're fighting, because there's a lot of, the majority of the people look at people with disability as if they are marginalized, you know, they, they, they're useless, uh, they're weak. No, it's not. We move differently. We have special needs. Yeah. We have special... Yeah. Uh, but but doesn't mean that we cannot be productive or active. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just a disability, but which you are addressing in that regard. But overall, it doesn't hamper you as a person. Yeah, sometimes I I lived my a part of my life trying to prove to mm -hmm. people, and this is something I think backfires at you because you don't have to prove anything for yeah. anyone. Yeah. But then you are faced with people who like don't believe. You know, don't yeah, believe yeah. in you. So this is this this was my journey actually, the fight, the yeah. struggle in believing in myself. Mm -hmm. I, I needed to believe in myself. Yeah, I mean like this hip injury is what actually This was my defining because yeah. you know my my kids I think were my motivation. Not I think I my kids mm -hmm. were my motivation because I had something to stand stand for. Like yeah. uh, like I have to be strong for them. Yeah. Uh I think if I didn't have my kids, that accident Maybe it would have taken me a long time to realize that I needed to do something yeah. about it. But, but I have someone that yeah. is that and needs me. Like you were, they were young as well. Very young. My daughter was six months. Oh, so you had to step I up. I had to like uh, change uh, to because I have a partner. Also, I don't want to bring my partner down. It's very important when you pass through a life changing experience. I mean, it's good to feel the emotions. It, it's definitely uh, your right to feel depressed, sad, whatever it is. But also for people, like, I'm going to tell them, advise them, seek uh, professional help mm -hmm. when you pass through any tragic trauma, crisis, whatever it is, because you will need professional help at, at some point yeah. and not uh, lay all the, um, uh, the happiness on your partner or your family. It, it can drain them. Yeah, it can drain the relationship as well. Yeah, definitely. And, 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 and it's not that they can help you as the help that you require. Exactly, exactly. It, it drains them emotionally and physically yeah. as well. Yeah. And then so, you're bringing them down with you. Yeah, definitely. You bring people down with you yeah. if you're down. So in your mental journey, like with your mental health, was how was it with your partner? Like, did, Was he supportive? Like, Did you understand it together? Yeah. Did you sail through this together? Yeah, my husband was uh, was very supportive. Was uh, like in our vows, for better or for worse. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Because we have, we have like any couple, we have our ups and downs. Mm -hmm. Uh, we supported each other and we still support each other through our journey through his also journey I support him and he supports me so so we are there for each other this is yeah. true love this when when true. when you pass through a bad situation you find someone yeah. that that will that is when you actually uh, that's the litmus test yes when you're actually know yes that situation yes exactly so what is one myth about life that you would like to debunk one myth about life that you would like to debunk Debunk like uh, yeah, like to prove wrong. Prove wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, about myth about life. Mm. Mm. So everybody believes in something that you know, probably that you can also prove otherwise. Uh, I think death. We are we are all scared of death. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no reason to be scared. <laughs> because, because I have I have a point. I believe me. I have okay. something. Okay. I realize something. Maybe I'll like, with experience, I'll realize more. But yeah, I ask myself this question if I think about that. Like, where was I before I was here? Like, I didn't have the awareness. Where was I? So, I think when you die, you don't know where. Like, <laughs> like you still. <laughs> I think that's a very good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you know where were you where you were? Yeah. No, you don't. Like, do you remember? No. no. <laughs> so, except for some religions, I think they remember. Yeah. But, uh, but for me, like, there's no reason to, to, to be scared because it's like a switch, like, like on yeah. and off. Oh, that's yeah. it. I think that, that's a good one. I think people can actually live with, you know, that's something. That's, I, I don't yeah. philosophize, like, have a lot of philosophies in life. But I think when you simplify things, you live happy, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, try to live day by day, like uh, people try to plan like years and years, yeah. like you never know. Because my life mm -hmm. was changing, like uh, I woke up that day, I broke my hip. I woke up, I didn't know I was going to break my hip. Mm -hmm. So you never know what will happen. Yeah. So I think people need to like relax, slow be, down, slow down, enjoy the moment, 
that's it. Oh, just enjoying the moment. I um, I was living in Abu Dhabi before, and when I moved to Dubai, is when I actually realized the importance of it, because life in Dubai is so fast paced. As much as I enjoy everything here, I can actually feel my life running away. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's already been seven months. It's, yeah, it's too fast. Yeah. So, what would your advice be to your twenty-year-old self? Ah, oh, interesting. Twenty-year-old, I was working at that time. Uh, I would say I was working and I was falling in love. No, <laughs> uh, no, I, I didn't meet my husband back then. But I started my job, and I I remember it was very stressful because I wanted to do good, mm -hmm. and and I think I let the people around me to uh, make me feel bad about myself if I did something wrong in the job because mm -hmm. you know you want to do everything. So I would say, like, you, be confident. This, you would do go the extra mile to prove yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would say, like, be confident. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like enjoy everything that you're doing. Don't mm -hmm. complain. Because I used to complain. I used to complain. <laughs> be more confident. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think confidence is a big thing. Yeah, I think a lot changed when you came to Dubai. Yeah. Right. So, if you were to write a memoir, what do you think you would call it? Like a memory, something, yeah? Yeah, your autobiography. Oh, autobiography. What would I call it? Do you, like, obviously, because with all the experiences that you've had, I think, you know, it, it calls for one, right? I think your song is also a testament. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, uh, I think so I would call, I call it, it yeah. I would call it Basma, like uh, imprint, foot, uh, fingerprint. Yeah, and that's when I thought about it. Maybe, like, because you had such a powerful song, yeah. it makes sense for you to probably also do an autobiography. So what is happiness for you? Happiness. Happiness is the process of uh, it's the process of life. It's the process of of uh, it's your journey. This is happiness, I think. It's not a destination. It's not some somewhere. I ah, I want to reach this so I will be happy because I've tried it and it's not. It's it isn't that mm -hmm. at all. It's it's the work that you do. That leads you to the to your goal. This is happiness for me. But reaching your goal. Yeah, reaching your goal, and it's the process mm -hmm. while reaching your goal. It's everything. What are three traits that define the real? What are three traits that define me? I'm undefinable. <laughs> <laughs> one one big trait. Undefinable. Uh, I think I would be um, determined. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. Clearly, yeah. uh, resilient. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely resilient. Uh, patient. I'm very patient. Yeah, you've been patient through life. Through life and and for people also, I'm very patient, very diplomatic. I give chances, but when when there's no more chances to give, I cut off people. How do you cut off life. people? Like, have you had people in your life that have been negative? So how do you cut off yourself from them? It's not about negative. It's about toxic. Toxic, yeah. Toxic people. It doesn't matter that I don't love these people, but it's important to think about your well-being first. Mm -hmm. This is very important. Yeah. To, uh, learn to say no to to things that will uh, affect your, your your mental health, that will affect your life. Uh, you should give to others and you should be there for others, but there's a limit. Mm -hmm. And and I mean it's normal like 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 people psychologists also they go to psychologists yeah, as yeah. well. So, so so I spoke to one psychologist once and that is what she told me. So I asked her like how do you manage with so much sorrow coming to you like so many troubles? Yeah. She's like we pour it into another cup. Yeah yeah exactly. So don't I try. Think it's a you know chain. Yeah and and for me because I have one trait also in me I. I have a genuine, uh, under, like, I, I listen to you genuinely. I try to help you. And I always try to help. Mm -hmm. Try to figure out a solution mm -hmm. for this so person's... Uh, who comes to you for help. Yeah. So that takes a lot of energy from me. But if I see you not taking action, I feel like, well, why did I waste all my energy? So I think this is toxic. When, when, when you waste your energy on people that don't appreciate it, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's it. You stop. Yeah. You stop giving. You stop giving. Yeah, mm -hmm. your energy how, wasted. How, hard, how difficult or how easy is it for you to say no? Easy? Like, how is it? Like, I find it so difficult to say no. I find it difficult to say no to my kids sometimes, honestly. <laughs> to the people that are but To my important. kids, it's no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to 
to really close people, my husband, my kid, my mom, my sister, yeah, yeah. like these are really close people. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I learned, yeah, to say no, because, you know, it's better to be honest than say yes and not be, uh, be uh, like uh, committed. This is also one thing in me, like I am very honest and maybe people would, would get hurt, like if say no, but I'm being honest with you. If I can do it, I will do it. But if I'm not, this is also protecting yourself. Yeah. Because you don't want them to feel reject, like mm. rejection and you don't want their reaction to hurt you. That's why you try to please them. Mm -hmm. No. It's a people-pleasing world. Yeah. But, but no, I, it, doesn't uh, work. It's, it doesn't work like this. Yeah. You want to uh, get ahead in life if you, if you uh, don't uh, really, rather not really honest with about yourself. every word that you say with yourself. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Doreen. It oh, we finished? Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Wow. It's really a pleasant conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time today. Like, it was lovely talking to you. Lovely. You're such an inspiration, Thank Doreen. And I always hope to get inspired by you. Thank you so much. I'm not going to feel lesser about myself. I'm going to push myself to Definitely. Push yourself. And you can yeah. do You can de do even more. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.